uh, it's almost scary. I mean, are we uh, somehow evolving by default into that uh, paranoia? state of mind into that society that is using technology now to control mm -hmm. who we are and the creative essence that lies within us um whether you, whether i think there's a like a cultural paranoia right i mean are we evolving into i mean uh, you know uh, quite often uh, literature recognizes what uh Mm -hmm. What is going to happen? It taps into the sensitivity and sensibility of the people who are making history. Right. So, you know, it's always one of the questions that I ask when I'm reading something or when I'm interested in a writer uh, or when I'm teaching, uh, you know, in what way is this uh, actually uh, uh, reflecting of this very society we're living in? Well, um, I think when I, when I started writing it... Uh, in 2004, I tried to imagine the country in 30 to 40 years. So it is futuristic, but it's it's the near future where um, technology has advanced, but not in a science fiction way necessarily, in a speculative way, but not necessarily science fiction. I didn't want to make it too unrealistic. Um, but to answer your question, there, there seems to be, um, like I read the other day, like the upper 2%, the, the, the 2% of the most wealthiest people in this nation are holding on to almost a quarter of the nation's wealth, okay? This is inc incredibly disproportionate. Now, I was reading in another article recently that it's on par with places like Uganda, places that have like these really turbulent, um, these really turbulent histories. And... Uh, bloody revolutions and, and dictatorships and it just seems to me in a lot of ways that what we're actually living isn't really that different um mm. so what happens in contraband is i did a reversal of american history because after the mexican-american war um america basically took a third of mexico's landmass from you know California to Texas, a great part of the Southwest, for $15 million. We gave them $15 million for it. So what happens in contraband is that that reverses. Those, those states secede from the country because they're like, we don't like where the republic's going. Mm -hmm. There's been uh, population, the, the population, there's been an exchange of population where people are polarizing to different parts of the country for political and cultural and social reasons. Um, and California and the Western Territories become their own country, in contraband. So what happens is, is that uh, the revolution, with a capital R, which is Washington, D.C., even though I changed the names of cities, says, right, right. we don't Empire think so, City, you belong, yeah. Empire City, Fog City, Santa Prieta, Santa San Prieta. Diego. Um, the, the revolution says we don't think so, and wages a war as a reclamation to take those, those territories back. So there's a civil war happening. What's happening is that the United States is starting to fragment, and there's all of this internal strife. And while that's happening, in a very Machiavellian way, mm -hmm. this digital dictatorship basically takes the executive, judicial, and congressional branches of government, appropriates them, well, Ref the reforms them so, for its right. exactly and installs a, a digital dictatorship so no one really knows who the revolution is you know there's a revolution people make reference to it people know it's affecting their lives they're running for their lives from it um, they know it's changing every they know it's the reason why everything's decaying and, and basically going to shit and people and freedom and personal rights and all of these things are going out the window um, and if you don't work for the revolution at some point you just don't work because it owns everything, which is a very Cuban. It's a very Cuban philosophy. It is, um, but I can't help but also see the um, universal ramifications of your work in that sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, where uh, you're you're talking how uh, you're talking about how this uh, reflects um, the. Uh, possible scenario uh, 
that could happen in the American context, uh, but I also see other points of reference, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, with the uh, former Eastern European bloc and then their uh, very traumatizing transition into oh, capitalism, yeah. and then the uh, 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 galvanized tensions going on uh, in their territory since they were unified for political reasons, but ethnically and culturally they were different nations. Right. Um, and to some extent, uh, what even happened with what has been the model of uh, social revolutions, right. the French revolutions. The basically. French revolutions are really so, good one. You know, uh, uh, have these, uh, these so-called revolutions, uh, uh, have they really been real? I think they're not. I think they're natural phenomena. I, uh, I don't. I, I mean, I think obviously people um, incite revolution. We've conceptualized revolution um, as someone who has been fortunate to live close to nature uh, during my my years of exile, mm. as I call it, which is not true, but it, it feels like that symbolically because I was always a New Yorker, um, a Latino New Yorker in the Pacific Northwest, and always felt out of place. Um, I had the the chance to live close to a lot of nature, and when you when you learn, um, there's a lot of references to nature in the book too. I mean, for an urban absolutely, writer, absolutely. I, I, I've I've had the chance to swim in the Caribbean and um, see beautiful mountains and and go into you know rivers and caves and meadows and all these amazing amazing places that were not like where I grew up and, and what I know best. So when you get to know nature. You can explain human uh, human human behavior becomes obvious. I mean, we're still very predatory. Um, so, in in terms of revolution and making a metaphor for that, um, you take something like a forest fire, which I've been close to. I've never been in a forest fire, but I've I've been in the countryside in the Pacific Northwest where you see in the distance you know, a mountainside on fire, and what happens in a forest fire is that the fire or the revolution um, causes this drastic, you know, lethal, radical transformation to the landscape. But the forest that grows back from those ashes is actually healthier than the forest oh, absolutely. That, that perishes in the fire. So a similar thing happens, a similar thing happens with, with revolution is that Let's take the, the French Revolution, 1789, somewhere mm. around there. Um, there was a monarchy in place in France. I can't remember the exact monarchs, um, but I know the components of the French Revolution. And at, so in you know, Versailles, it was the, the court right, of Versailles, right. and, and you know, outside of Paris, and they were so out of touch with the Parisians and the peasants all over France who were starving. You know that finally there was there was an uprising, and the monarchy was disassembled, beheaded, whatever, murdered, deported. I don't know exactly what happened to all of them, but they undid the monarchy and um, installed their version of the parliament, which is the Assemblée Nationale, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, reformed their government. Like, in, in the ashes of the monarchy, reformed the government that has produced the France of today, who's had a big impact on the American structure of of government, so sometimes revolution is, is, is necessary to wipe the slate clean um, and start over. Now, there's a scary side to that, in that, you know, if, if uh, a genuine revolution, a military-backed revolution was to have, America's a really large country, so, you know, it would, it would be a very difficult thing. So what I was careful with in the book was that um, there's a Republican army, mm. that the revolution, the Republican Guard, rather, um, which I took out of actual history, and as the revolution is spreading, men are being forced to fight in the Republican Guard, and this is why the Republican military is able to go back and reclaim those territories that have been trying to secede, and why the, the military, the, the, the Republic's military, is able to intervene in common people's everyday lives.